Hello there. In this video, we're going to look at uh, how to set up different models on Desmos in a way that connects to what we're doing in class, and also some of the basic tips uh, that you should think about as you're setting this up in Desmos to make your graph as clear as possible. All right, so first of all, you've got your data in your graph, and I've only chose the past 20 years of data points for world population. You definitely need more than that, and you want to go further back in time, look at the posting to see the details there. Um, but you have your points, and you're going to have a bunch of different models that you use to represent the trend that you're seeing here. You, you also want to have labels for each of the equations, labels for your axes, labels for the carrying capacity, and then you want to take a screenshot of it all and put it into a Google Doc. But what are some things we can do as we're setting this up to make it less uh, maybe confusing or overwhelming? Uh, the first thing is to use folders. So you'll see over here each of these icons are different folders. As I click them, it actually turns on and off the things that I did in that folder. All right, and that's really useful because you, as you expand these folders, you'll see they get kind of messy and you want to have the ability to organize that. So when you're doing this, for example, and you want to set up a linear model, click on the folder, type in linear model, and if you press enter, anything you type in will be a part of that folder. And if I don't want it in the folder, I can just click it to the left. Now it's out of the folder, but if I want it in the folder, I can just drag it back to the right. And you see that little line right there. Now when I collapse that folder, it collapses everything in it, and when I turn it on and off, it then shows or hides whatever was in that folder. When you're writing your different models, use function notation, that'll help you. And also, I would put little subscripts to keep track of the different models you're working on. So for the linear model, I didn't just type f of x equals mx plus b. I typed in ones after each of the variables. So after f here, letter f, type one. After the variables for our slope, I type a one and it gives me a subscript automatically. That helps me keep track of the variables in this model so I don't reuse them later on. And then you wanna just kind of drag back and forth until you get what you think is a good fit. And that just means uh, it's gonna be as close to as many of those points as possible. You wanna avoid the mistake of thinking it has to go through any of the points, it doesn't. It has to be as close to them, it might go through none of them. It certainly does not need to cross the y-intercept. And what you're doing here is creating a slider to do that. And the way you do that is when you type out the equation, I'll show you right now, delete this. Once I type in a variable, this little thing pops up and says, do you want to make a slider? Yes, I do. And so it should do that automatically. And then you have sliders to play with. And I'd rather you do that than the actual regression because I want you to play around the transformations. If you want to do a regression as a backup, you can do that. The regression might help you. Now, as far as labeling goes, uh, a couple of tricks here. All you want to do, first of all, is create a point. So I'm going to just delete this for a second, and I'm going to add a point. Okay, expression. I'll just I'll go with the origin, make it easy. And for label, what you want to do is see if I click label here. Let's see. It turns on the numeric label for that point. Uh, but I want to do two things. I want to make this point movable, and I want it to display text instead of a number for a point. So the way I can do that is just type up my equation. So mine's f of x equals, and I'm going to leave those subscripts out. You don't need them for this part. 0 0.084, that's my slope, times x plus 6.1. And I copy that. And before I paste it in for the label and finish, if I just paste it in and you look, you look at it, you're looking at LaTeX. And LaTeX is a nice programming uh, uh, character set um, and language, excuse me, for math and science publication. But we don't want that right now. So we want to turn that into something that looks nice. So next to the number one on the keyboard is this little quotation mark. Put that in the front and the back. And uh, then whatever is inside will be that nice LaTeX notation. And in general, you can turn on or off the thing you just did by toggling these things here, on and off. But if you click the gear, you can then do all kinds of other things, like you can make this draggable, which is very useful. You can change the color. You can change the size of it. Minus a two versus a two is big. See that? Um, you can turn it with radians. If you want to turn it 90 degrees, that's pi over two rad. You can make vertical text. I did all the way, excuse me. 
which is my vertical text. And I have actually a point that I can now drag around and I drag the text with it, which gives me a lot of flexibility here when I'm trying to set up a screenshot or the exporting of this image through this button right here. So it gives me a lot of flexibility. Let me just go back and turn it off, go back to the original point. You really wanna make sure also the, the labels um, match the color of the model. So for example, I'm undoing a bunch of stuff. Give me a second. Almost there. Okay, so you'll notice here that this label, right, if I turn it on and off, is that red point for the red graph. And again, by clicking the gear, you can then change the colors to whatever you want. But often I'll hide the point, but leave the label on, and that's all you're seeing here over and over again. You're seeing the point is hidden. By that, I mean I turned it off over here. It's draggable, so I can move the label wherever I want, and the label stays checked. Collapse my folder and then repeat. You can see, I can even turn off the function and that label. So use those labels again, type out whatever equation you have, paste it in here and just put the little quotation marks in the front and back and you'll get that nice LaTeX format. Uh, I do the same thing for uh, labeling my axes right here and here. I just make um, two points with labels and then if I need to turn them or adjust them, I click on the gear and I click over here, I can make all kinds of adjustments by turning, shifting, color, whatever I need. Okay, so we talk about points. Oh, also, um, when you're working with the graphs, if you go over to the wrench over here, you can change the X and Y axis label. Label. I just find it easier to do it this way because now I can move these things around. Make sure you save your graph. Oh no, don't not save it, right? Save your graph. Uh, everything here, a lot of students will do it all. They'll take the link up here, copy, share it. That's not going to work. First, you must save it, get it into your library of functions or work. It. And then over here, click the share graph button. And this is the link I'm looking for. I'll show you what it looks like in a moment in a Google Doc. But you can also export the image instead of sharing it with a screenshot. So, for example, um, here, I like a screenshot because I can kind of get the camera wherever I want. Um, and you can look up how to do a screenshot on your computer and just grab what I need, which gives you some nice flexibility. Whereas if I go over here to export image, there are some things I can do. It just might require me to play around with it a bit more to get it to work right. Um, and let's see, when you move over to, okay, we talked about, I'm just thinking, don't miss anything. Oh. Carrying capacity right here. It's just a horizontal line. And what I also did was I added two labels. So this label here. And you can see uh, there's this point on the bottom for axis label. And sorry, and for this point right here for the y axis label. That's all I'm doing there. It's not the carrying capacity label, it's the axis labels. Carrying capacity is right here. It's just y equals 10 with a point above it, saying the phrase of what it is. So those labels are really useful. And once you're ready, you would take a screenshot or whatever and put this into a Google Doc. The only thing I ask is that um, your writing is about this length, it should be on the first page, should describe the carrying capacity that you chose and why it should have proper citations with a works cited on the back. Don't worry, Google Docs do, does this for you automatically, which I show in another video. Um, but basically it's under tools here. You can go to citations and just, it's amazing. It grabs the data for you and it makes it so easy to use. If you're citing a study for a statement, great. Put the brief citation in the text and then the longer citation at the end. And again, Google Docs will do that for you automatically. But once you're done explaining why you think the carrying capacity is what it is, let's say, in this case, sorry, it's 10. You write a little bit about your reasonings. We want to hear your reasons, hear your thinking. I'll also tell us in the above graph what the prediction is. When will it reach the carrying capacity? You can see here, I also clicked those two points that would represent that value. And if you're doing that, you can just, I'll show you what it looks like. Click and click here. And if you lose those numbers and need them in the screenshot or the exporting of the image, just type them out over here and then um, plot them as points and that will work nicely. Okay, let's see. Um, make sure you go through the posting online, see the details here. Really want you to be ready for this. Uh, this is kind of the length of it and what it looks like. You, you probably will have more sources than this, uh, but I just wanted to show you a brief sample.
Okay, thanks.